Hey, mic check, mic check, mic check, testing, testing, testing as we go live here tonight. Um, hey, this is the Easter edition of Have Your Best Week Ever. So if you listen to the replay, I want to, to say happy Easter, happy uh, Resurrection Sunday to you. And hopefully you've had a great Easter, spent some time with, um, first of all, given reason for the season and the gift that was given to you. That was number one. Number two is... Um, Hopefully you had a chance to spend some time, some time with some loved ones, and and I say loved ones, and I, I mean that done sincerely. And so, um, you know, as we had a chance to spend time with some old friends and and new acquaintance uh, who may become friends soon. So hey, that's uh, always a blessing as we do that and get a chance to do that. So tonight, hey, I want to be quick and brief to the point as we move into um, we're deep into April. That's right, deep into April late Easter this year, but we're in the second quarter and we're talking about those values and, and really values, excuse me, and really modeling those values. So, hey, let's do a couple things here real quick. Let's go ahead and hit record and uh, so we can get set and get going live. Hey, welcome to Have Your Best Week Ever. And, you know, if you're listening live and sharing this week um, with us, um, you know, hopefully you're joining in live. But if not, I understand, hey, it's Easter. It's Easter, Easter. So you should be... Uh, hopefully um, winding down from a great day and of um, starting out with church, whatever your faith is. Uh, I'm a Christian myself, but, you know, I respect the other religions and, and value the fact that all faiths are centered around service, service. You know, when you really get to the heart of most faith, it's, it's, it's really valued around service. And so I challenge you to think about it from that standpoint, but as we Share tonight, I uh, just wanted to um, just share, hey, you know, practicing the principles you preach, you know, that is the title of what we're sharing, but really it's about uh, how do you help model those values that you want to help you, how do you help create the culture that you want to have in your business, in your life, and so, you know, so we want to talk about walking the talk, practicing the principles you preach. I mean, that's the key thing, walk the talk. You know, there's a saying that says this real simple what you do speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. And to me, that's one of the most powerful things, um, both in business, as a dad, um, as a husband. Um, I mean, really, <laughs> at the end of the day, that's what it's about, is that, you know, we can say certain things, but at the end of the day, we're judged by the the, the, the things that we do. We're, we're judged by the principles that we live by. We're, we're judged by the examples that we give. And so that's why this is so key. And I want to challenge you to do that. And so, you know, we can teach the right examples. I mean, we could teach the right principles, but without the right examples, you know, it, it, it falls to the wayside. And so that is what people see. You know, there's a saying that says, what you do speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. And so as a parent, hey, that's what your kids look at. You know, they look at what you do. You know, you can tell them not to curse or drink, but if you're doing that, then it's kind of hypocritical. You know, used to, and some of us my age, we grew up in an area where, hey, do as I say, not as I do as I say, not as I do. But more importantly now, I think, you know, our youth today look at what we do. So we have to be examples of that. And then even in our companies or on our team, we have to be true examples of that. So leading by example, ensure these following benefits. Number one, the support of the principles based on their results. See, people see what we're doing and then they judge us by those results. People see us by what we're doing and they judge us by those results. And so I challenge you to think about it from your standpoint. Am what I doing producing the results that I that I'm sharing and teaching. You know, what I'm doing, are they teaching, are they producing the results that I desire? You know, so a full understanding of the principles. So it's important that we help people understand the principles. See, just imparting the principles is not enough. We also have to help people understand why the principles are important. See, oftentimes, we were, like I said, we were told, and I said this earlier, as I shared, we were told to do as I say, but we didn't understand necessarily why, and we just did it, 
But now I think in today's environment, today's culture, we have to help people understand the principles that we are sharing and the value of the principle for them and to them. The value of the principle for them and to them. And then cohesion and cooperation. See, see, there's when you're talking about a team, how do you help get cohesion and cooperation? Those two C's are very important if you're going to build your team, if you're going to ensure legacy after you're gone. And so that's something that's very, very important is that cohesion and cooperation. You know, if you're creating a sales organization and you as a sales manager or as a team leader, you don't want to make calls or you don't lead a sales call a certain way. I just take, let's just take, for instance, if you're in the car industry and, and you're teaching your team to have a certain type of conversation with the prospect, but you're not modeling that when you meet with the people, it's going to be impossible to get cohesion and cooperation from the team because of that. And then when you do that, it ultimately leads to respect. And see, when others see that you're fully complying with these principles, that you teach, you will gain their respect. And when you gain their respect, that's when they will go to bat for you. I mean, they'll, they'll fully go to bat for you to all ends. And so you want to make sure and ensure that you're doing that from that standpoint. That is one of the key things with what we're talking about tonight. So, you know, you get disastrous results. And I just want to share this here as we get ready to wrap up. You know, when you practice what you preach, but you're not living the principles. That's why it's key that you when you when you teach these life principles, you allow your actions to dictate yes. Not otherwise, but yes. See, when your actions dictate otherwise, then things don't go well. People don't believe you, don't stick there. And so I wanna share about three things with you here that you're bound to run into when this happens. You know, when you expect compliance, you know, you, you're gonna get resentment, especially if you the principles you're teaching are a challenge for them to perform. See, sometimes we wanna share and, and implement principles that are out of reach of our team. And so we have to help them grow into that. We have to help them grow into that. The other thing is you may get a negative reputation as an effective leader, ineffective leader or teacher, as you lose sight of the very actions you teach. And so when I say the actions you teach, so, you know, so number one is that, are you living the actions? And if you're not, then you're gonna get this reputation as a, ineffective leader or ineffective teacher, ineffective coach. And so as a coach, you know, one of the things I know I have to do is I have to walk the talk. I have to walk the talk. And so I want to challenge you to think about that from your standpoint as you build your team and you move forward. And then last but not leastly, the rebellion was, will grow, you know, as more people feel they're being dictated to instead of being led. So you have to lead your team. You have to lead your team. So now I want you to begin to really start leaving your team by example. So start small, stick to those immediate, to that immediate circle of influence, those one or two people that can help you have the greatest impact. The one or two people that can help you have the greatest impact. That's where you're gonna stick to, that's where you're gonna drive at. And then give yourself the opportunity to import moral and good belief systems. So really do what you say in, you know, do what you say and do what you say. That's right. Do what you say and do what you say. That's really what you're doing as you move forward with that. And then tackle each principle one at a time. And then work hard at align this, allowing this to become an integral part of your morals, your belief. You know, and so as, as you move it into your system, your belief system, guess what? Things are going to begin to work hard things are gonna to begin to happen as you move it into your everyday walk. So people will see this in your daily walk and guess what? The results will speak for themselves. So walking the talk is a lifelong journey. So you have to do this every, every day. 
for people to really own the process with you, for people to truly believe in it with you. So I want to challenge you to do that as you move forward. So as we move forward, hey, I challenge you to connect with us here uh, every week. Hey, this is a quick one. It's a Sunday night edition of an Easter Sunday night edition. Let's, let's, let's dive it in <laughs> even deeper. And we're going to be sharing a lot this week. So hey, you can, one, always go to have your best week ever, but also you can come over to, uh, in, the, in the Facebook feed, you see, hey, we have a special um, bonus session of 91 day game plan. Hey, jump on with us. Hey, we're going to talk about some things around purpose and vision to help you get clarity and drive forward for you and your team. So, hey, jump in on that, but, you know, sign up and have your best week ever. You can always connect with us on Sunday nights here and then download a copy of the growth planner. It's the system that I use. That's right. As you can see that I use, hey, I'm getting off tonight and dive in for about 30, 40 minutes inside of my growth planner to help me have my best week ever and just move forward from there. So download your copy and um, get some results to help you have your best week ever. So with that said, hey, I want to challenge you to go out as always, as always in closing to go out and have your best week. But before you do that, go over to 91 Day Game Plan, join the conversation with us, jump on this week and um, on Tuesday night at 8 p.m., we're going to have a bonus session for 91 Day Game Plan. It's in the feed. Just check the Facebook feed, the Zoom link. No charge. Come hang out with us. Bring an open mindset. Be ready to learn on some things that will help you crush your Q2. That's right. Crush your Q2. So with that said, hey, I challenge you to go out and have the best week possible. That's right. The best week possible because guess what? Only you can make that happen. If you keep having good weeks, it's just going to get gooder and gooder, better and better. And the next thing you know, you're going to have your best year. But the only way you can do that is be the best you possible. And by being the best you possible, you will always meet the best that you can be. Hey, I would like to say take care to all those that joined in with me tonight live and those that you're watching on the replay. Hopefully it's been a great Easter, but this week will be even better. Because remember, he gave his life roles to give us the gift that we can continue to live and give more to others. With that said, go out and serve somebody and we shall see you this week. Take care.